Welcome to Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I'm D.H. Taylor. Today I want to talk about Planet 13 Holdings. Planet 13 is one of my top picks. This is a company that I think has a lot of potential to grow just by themselves. They're sitting on a ton of cash. They've got some revenue that continues to increase. They're opening up concept stores around the nation. They just opened up the Orange County store. They've got one in Illinois on the works uh, up in Chicago. And this is a company that I think is going to do a lot of great things. Simultaneously, I think this is a company that's probably going to get acquired at some point by a much larger player. That's fine. Given where they are right now, I wanted to break down some of the numbers that we're looking at. Margins are a little on the soft side, and the expectation is that California gross margins are going to be competitive and therefore not as high as what we're used to see for some of my other top picks. Given that, they're still going to be very competitive and be able to print some great numbers. I'm looking at future earnings expectations. Some numbers that I've come up with before, I did some research and I found that other analysts in the industry are calling for the same numbers. I'm not sure if they're just reading my information or how that works out, whether we're just all on the same page. But a lot of us in the industry, we kind of use the same metrics. Given that, I've got future earnings expectations with future forward uh, multiples. It's going to push this stock up real high. Let's jump into the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First time stopping by the channel or my website. Thanks so much for stopping by. Here's what you're going to get. Analytics. I'm showing numbers. I'm showing charts. You're not going to get much hype here. I had the opportunity and I say opportunity. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this. Someone had one of one of one of you sent me a link to a YouTube channel. Uh, video one of the fellow youtubers out there who um, did a recent thing on planet 13 and his little sort of jab in the back of my ribs was simply this this is the most uh, the best and most recent analysis on planet 13 because cannabis investing newsletter hasn't done it in over six months and I was like I just did planet 13 the thing is planet 13 often pops up in some of my top 10 videos. So in my mind, I thought that I had already done Planet 13 for the past quarter. Nope. I just thought I did because I talk about Planet 13 so much because it is one of my top picks. Their numbers are great, but I didn't do a video on them. And as it turns out, the other YouTuber that I had the pleasure of watching, I sat there, I, I, so I literally sat there and I kept forwarding it, waiting till he got to the point where there was something actionable with reason. I, that's three minutes of my life I'll never get back. So for those of you who have not been here before, um, I break down financial analytics and I show you what a stock should be worth based on how the broader market value stocks all right given that and if you've clicked on the thumbnail for this you have a pretty good idea what i think is going to happen with planet 13 it's significantly undervalued um, again as i said in my intro i also believe that planet 13 gets acquired or merges or something big happens with this company this is a company that has a lot of opportunity they also got a lot of cash they have like no debt as well Earnings per share forward multiple. So whenever I start my videos off, I try to kind of give you a pace as to what's gonna, what we're going to talk about. Earnings per share forward multiples. What we do is we take um, earnings per share and we look at it. And you, you're basically asking the question, how much is next year's earnings worth to an investor? All right. And we come up with forward multiple earnings. Right now, the broader market, the S&P 500, is trading about 40 times future earnings. So if you have a company that's churning out $1 in earnings over the next 12 months, four quarters, that would, on average, push the stock to 40 bucks. All right? But this is cannabis. Number one, revenue growth rate for 
on average, revenue growth rate for the S&P 500 is 3.5 percent. If you watched my video just yesterday, I kind of break down averages. I talked about averages and things like this. Give you a good example of an average and how someone who has studied economics and statistics, how we look at averages. Let me let me kind of give you a sort of a concept. If you're sitting in a chair and you got one leg, one one of your legs is sitting in ice a bucket of ice water and the other leg sitting in a bucket of boiling water on average you're comfortable so given these kinds of averages when we look at say the S&P 500 you can have stocks that are not printing revenue gains are actually losing money quarter over a quarter then you have other companies that are continuously printing more than the average. You create an average. Given that, S&P 500, 3.5% for the year. Forward multiple, 40 times. Cannabis, 7.5%. For the quarter, they are printing eight times faster revenue growth with cannabis than the S&P 500. That's the average of about 100 stocks that I follow on my website. Not all of them are exceptional. I've got 13 top picks. For those of you who have not stopped by that page on the website, I invite you to do so. So what would be a rational forward multiple given such a rapid growth rate? I use 100 times, which is 2.5 times more than the S&P 500. But keep in mind what's going on with the S&P 500. 3.5% revenue growth rates. Uh, and my top picks far exceed the averages for gross margins, uh, EBITDA to revenue, things like that. Planet 13 Hollywood, uh, Planet 13 Holdings similar to Planet Hollywood uh, in the concept. They, they put together like these mega stores and their, their initial place is down in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Unfortunately, Nevada really bolted everything down for COVID-19. And this really affected both Planet 13 and C21 Investments who are also out in uh, Nevada. Their revenue growth rate wasn't really there until this past quarter. They're starting to get the margins that we're looking for. It's still a process. They're going to build up. They're going to get there. But they're also sitting on a ton of cash too. That's something that's really impressive. But let's break down Planet 13 real quick. And let's look, take a look at some things. PLNHF here on the OTC in the United States. $750 million market capitalization. I think it's like 765, but it keeps fluctuating and we saw some changes. 196 million shares outstanding, kind of a low share count uh, with an unlimited float. As I mentioned, they're sitting on a ton of cash. They have no reason to, at this point, issue more shares to bring in more cash. Uh, instead, they may be acquiring some things, and I'm, I get the impression from the latest um, transcripts that I read, they're kind of looking. So this could be interesting. Maybe TerraSend? Just saying. 52 week high on Planet 13. 8 bucks 67 was the high. 318 was low. I think they're trading about 380, 376. Uh, I think I saw earlier this morning, but I think it kind of fluctuated a little bit. We've seen kind of a little bit of a bottom the past two days in some of the major players. Let's see how that plays out. Nonetheless, still a solid stock. Comparisons, if you've not been to my site. Previously, this was the most popular page on my website, and I continue to build the website. And for those of you who uh, who do follow me on a regular basis, going into the, there's two months left in this year, I'm going to continue to kind of look at some of these smaller stocks and kind of build the content up for the website. Then, starting in January, for the next five months going out, there's another page that associated with every single stock where I have the stock, uh, all the financial data and things like this. 
that page is actually going to become the primary page for everything and I'm sort of still developing that so there's a lot of work that's going to happen on that um, I gotta be honest with you I'm really not looking forward to it because it's going to be a lot of work a hundred pages with a whole lot of data entry nonetheless I have on my website the comparisons where I look at all 100 stocks you can look at it on a um, there's kind of a spreadsheet kind of thing there um, this is not proprietary someone had sent me an email saying hey listen it's really not working out on my on my uh, I can't really function with it Co copy and paste it this is not in from if you're actually looking at this then you're one of my subscribers so thank you for the support feel free to copy and paste it put it in a spreadsheet all you want I try and update it on a regular basis probably get to it again this weekend and input some of the new information that I have in there I continually try and keep that up to date let's compare planet 13 market capitalization 765 this puts them at number 15 so top one of the top uh, stocks out there from a market cap standpoint revenue growth rate 37.8 percent they had a big jump this past quarter uh, this put them at number 22 for revenue growth rate uh, gross margins again number 22 place 55.8 percent it's a little on the soft ish side they're letting us know ahead of time basically they expect California's numbers to not be awesome when it comes to gross margins because it's such a competitive uh, state and that's fine but I also believe that they'll have the competitive ability to push that up so initially we might see a dip to say maybe 52 50 percent for gross margins but then if the eventuality is that they start to push forward as more revenue pushes through the OC store maybe they hit the 60 percent numbers that we'll be looking for operating efficiencies number 33 57.3 percent I'm going to talk a little bit about more about this going forward but that's not a good number you want to see between 30 and 35 percent still they're in the top third but I'd like to see better numbers EBITDA to revenue 2.4 percent number 27 that's a pretty low number to be honest with you but their operating efficiencies was really kind of the driving thing right there they're going to get there they're going to start printing these numbers let's give them a sort of a moment as they build up momentum cash to debt ratio number three 363 percent cash to debt these guys are sitting on I think like 165 million off the cuff of my sleeve here um, that's ginormous they've alluded that they're looking to do something with that maybe there's a merge up that's gonna happen not sure uh, but I if they could get themselves involved with a an up-and-comer juicy who knows uh, this could be an interesting play finally total assets number 14 coming in at 188 million here we can see the most recent revenue growth 32.8 million that was stellar it's going to continue to grow although they did say that their growth rate might slow somewhat this is a big jump from 23.8 all the way up to 32.8 Orange County starting to work out the numbers aren't incredible but they're starting to get there it's a competitive market and I'm not exactly sure why they chose Orange County because uh, you got Hollywood that seems more touristy and that's kind of their modest operandi looking for tourist areas Orange County I mean I guess you go down to Disneyland you take the kids you wear them out feed them put them to bed and then you go to the dispensary I don't know how that works for Orange County I don't exactly see, I used to live in Pasadena for about 15 years I don't exactly see how Orange County would be the touristy draw but that's what they did uh, nonetheless I mean if they ever make it up into Hollywood that makes a lot of sense because here's the thing your cost structures because you have two stores in the same state change significantly so I'm looking to see what kind of uh, transitions they have there unfortunately California doesn't look like they're gonna be issuing any new licenses anytime soon for dispensaries
Gross margins, 55.8%. And honestly, these gross margins are fairly flat. Dispensaries have the ability to be consistent, but these guys are vertical. They're growing their own products. Uh, they're sort of licensing out some other things, wholesaling. They're doing, uh, I think they saw 20% of their business is wholesale out of Nevada or something like that. So they are doing some other business out there, and that's important. But your margins aren't exactly stellar with wholesale because you're basically providing a, a raw product that someone else puts value added into and puts a label, jacks up for premium profits. So nonetheless, I expect we'll probably dip a little bit, but I do anticipate that we'll see some higher numbers later. Operating efficiencies come in nearly at 60% at 57.9%, up from 40%. Wrong direction. If you've never seen this variable before, um, <clears throat> what I do is I take total operating costs and I divide that over total revenue. This gives us an idea of how much efficiency management, sales, general, and administrative, SG&A, is with product all right so here's the thing as this company grows number one they're starting to spend more money in sales to boost their profile in nevada we've seen the results of that with the revenue being generated huge jump up with 32.8 million that they printed in revenue all right it costs money to get that advertising things like this they're starting to advertise hard in orange county the operating efficiencies, it might be that now that they're spending more money down in California, it's going to take a while to bring in that sort of solidified customer base. You know, California has uh, several dispensaries in there. They're, this isn't, they're not the first people there. California actually was the first state to go medical only back in 96, I think it was. So they're going to have to spend money on sales to get this revenue, all right? And then they can sort of develop that sort of customer base. This is, this is where this uh, sort of push-up is coming from, how this plays out as revenue increases. If they maintain the same marketing budgets with increasing revenue, what happens is your efficiency improves this chart will go back down, but it's not going to be overnight. Mostly over the past uh, 10 quarters, aside from one quarter with some write offs, they've been, Planet 13 has been a bit too profitable. Okay. Um, but there's been some inconsistencies here, and you really do want to see consistencies. But they've been kind of opening up new facilities. Uh, there have been spurts with, you know, COVID, locking down Nevada, all sorts of things. So it's hard to kind of get that consistency when you're not working in a consistent environment. Nevada at this point is not getting mandatory with masks uh, like they were, but I know there is some things going on out there, and the company did talk that this was an effect on the company. Nonetheless, um, being a bit of profitable, that's the first sort of milestone once you start producing product and selling it. You want to hit this EBITDA level. That, of course, translates into net earnings. Net earnings, this is where I wanted to kind of pause and talk a little bit. My previous videos and, and up on my website, I'm, um, uh, the one page where I have all my top picks, best marijuana stocks to buy now. I have, I think, $12.50 for my call for Planet 13. And I will reiterate that. Right now, you're trading sub $4, so you're looking at 200% increase. That should occur right about now over the course of the next, starting in the next two quarters. We're going to print one here probably in the next two weeks, so you're really looking at about you know, three and a half months, four and a half months, or something like that. That forward multiple, all right, they're looking at 
12 cents per share, earnings per uh, share. And I talked about this at the beginning. I'm using 100 times. So if you're printing 12 cents in earnings, what is that worth to an investor today? If this was the S&P 500, on average, you'd be looking at 40 times. This is a, a slightly above average company. If you compare these metrics to the S&P 500, you'll see that these guys outperform in some metrics, but they're still kind of turning the corner and getting there. So it's very possible that uh, they're closer to the average. Fine, 40 times 12 cents. It's nearly five bucks. This stock is trading at um, 376. The high was about eight dollars. So they're sort of in that wheelhouse for current metrics. But where our expectations are for 12 cents for next year, we've got about a quarter and a half to go. So starting next year, you should see investors coming in and driving for that net earnings should they actually hit those net earnings that the analysts and myself have called for roughly 12 cents. That's what I'm keying in on. This is 200% right there that you're looking at. Potential from this price today. Cash on hand, 136.3 million, down from 141.1 million, and they lost the 4 million. I think it was like 4.1 million that they lost. You can actually see it playing out right here on cash on hand. Plenty of cash, almost no debt. Cash to debt ratio, 362.5%. They have almost no debt. If they were to get to net earnings positive and be there consistently, which are, that's our expectations for next year, okay, they're just going to be bringing in more cash, more cash, more cash. You want to see them put that cash to work. Maybe find an, a partner company in another state that they're, that is not uh, that might be net earnings positive or EBITDA positive, but not in the same locations that these guys are. So that could be something interesting. Uh, and it's going to be something I'm going to be kind of taking a look at. They may make a move versus being moved on. But if you have like a green thumb, true leaf, you know, one of these bigger players, they could easily sit there and say, listen, we're not in Nevada. Uh, we've got a small presence in California. Here's another company with a presence in California. Whew, grab it. Should be interesting. Total A equity, 188 million. Building your equity, building assets in order to create revenue. That's what you want to see management doing. These guys are hitting it. So on this chart, instead of having the um, dollar amount, I went with the percentage. And I really, this kind of goes back to what I just did yesterday with uh, looking at MeriMed versus the S&P 500. If you didn't catch that video, um, it was an interesting video. You know, I get a lot of guys who are sitting there saying, listen, nothing's happening in cannabis stocks. Well, actually, the beginning of the year, MeriMed, if you look at it, that's a stock that's up 100% since January of last year. Granted, it was up much more, and it has a lot more to go. But there are some stocks that do have traction when you look at it from a perspective. At the same time, the S&P 500 is printing all-time new records like every five minutes or something like that. It's hard to keep track. You just sort of look, and you're like, well, all right, it's back up again. Um, but it's only up 24% for the year. So when you're looking at some of these better-performing stocks that are up 100% per year, you, kind of, you should be looking at the S&P 500 and say, wow, that's kind of lousy. But someone just asked me a question uh, via email. Do I ever show my portfolio? I don't. Because it's sort of one of those clickbait things um, where I sit there and I turn to you, if you would have bought Amazon back at 
in 1998 when it was $3, you'd be worth a ginormous amount right now. And because of that, you need to follow me. That's just real clickbaitish uh, to me. And the reason why, and that's not a slight on the individual uh, at all. Uh, I just don't do that. If you had followed me, so I took a little break, came back in August, September, October of last year. Well, cannabis stocks were literally in the toilet. And I started writing on Seeking Alpha saying, wow, look at this stock. You know, this is crazy. This thing should be, you know, a $5 stock. It's trading at 10 cents. Well, that was all of cannabis up until November. All right. So I don't do that sort of clickbait because if I've showed you, hey, listen, if you would have, you know, followed me back then, this is where you'd be today. Well, some of you did follow me back then and you followed me over to this to my website versus you know the content I was providing up at Seeking Alpha and thank you for that but how does that help you today and that's my thing here I'm not trying to clickbait you guys to death you know just to get clicks on my freaking YouTube channel let me tell you something I don't make anything off of YouTube it's just not worth it the website is where that any any value of this what I'm doing it comes from the website YouTube, it's a great medium for me to put my information out there, but you don't make money from that at all. I've got 3,000 followers. You know, maybe in about two and a half years, I'll be able to pay rent from it, but not right now. Given that, um, looking at where this could be, you should be able to see we're getting close to the end of the year. So as this stock kind of moves lower, if you're considering Planet 13, which I think you should, it's one of my top picks, you could easily be looking at a 200% gain today if you got involved in this stock. All right. Not when I got involved in writing about it back in October of last year or any other time. Given that, Planet 13, they're going to get there. All right. This is a company that will, I like the concept, their margins are almost there. They're turning a corner and starting to spend a little more money on advertising, things like this. COVID-19 really hit them uh, in, in Nevada, but they're turning that around. They're going to get there. My expectation is if we hit that, if, they, if these guys hit their numbers and they hit $0.12 cents per share earnings next year, you're looking at a stock that's trading at twelve fifty. plain and simple. That's 200% compared to where it is right now. Oh, that's a great investment. The S&P 500 next year, maybe 25%. Thanks for so, so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, please, by all means, uh, the email subscribe list down below. Subscribe to the website. I send you an email, like three, four, five uh, emails per week, basically showing you what I'm looking at on a regular basis. It's free. Um, given that, thanks so much, guys, for smashing the like button and leaving those great comments. See you in the next video.